a child, I was mesmerized by things that were like that, beautiful things. I was a child like everybody else, throwing stones, and every once in a while, I would see beautiful things, and I stopped and looked, and I said, hmm, that is something extraordinary. I don't know that I told anybody, but I just stopped to look. Beauty has a power of stopping you on your tracks. It's amazing. I have all the books around me. Uh, I pick one, start reading, go to another one, go back to the first one. Um, I guess to give it time to settle in. And so the painting does the same process in which the characters for some reason change and they take their own volition and their own interest and, and they behave in a, in a way, of course it's the writer that is behind that and it's, it's not the writer himself, it's the subconscious that dictates that and knows more than anything we'll ever know in our conscious mind. It's a kingdom that we carry inside and it tells you where to go. But just like a dream, in a dream everything makes sense. But if you analyze it, there was nothing that makes sense. Things, you don't understand them intellectually, but visually, they were not. So, once you have established a, the parameters of the painting, where are you going, what's, you know, where are the feet and where is the head, where is uh, the front of the cart and the back of it, uh, still like, whatever you're painting, first you do the drawing, Sometimes a very fast drawing, um, very sketchy. You probably need to go into detail afterward. Try to make it more concrete. Or sometimes you leave it like that. And the, the oil does the rest of the trick. The beauty of watercolor is the transparency, the, uh, the immediacy of the medium. It's there and yet if you look at certain part, it looks like it's not there. It looks like a, a, a something that is totally translucent. But the effect is extraordinary. I'm not a storyteller, I just, these are things that I paint because I want to see them. It's a sort of meditation, it's, you know, you're concentrated on things that are there and they're not there. They're fictitious, but to you as a painter, they become alive. There are certain names that are historical names like Kuma, Casabianca. Casabianca is not a place, it's the name of a poem of an American poet, Bishop. She wrote 
a small poem, very, very beautiful, called Casabianca. And I name this kingdom that I paint every once in a while, Casabianca. It has nothing to do with the Casablanca from uh, Morocco. I did once a painting of a, a black man writing poems next to the shore. And it came from a man I saw in Italy at a beautifully appoint, appointed beach where I used to go with my children. And he used to come selling watches of all kinds. But he sat by himself there probably counting his money or something. He's a large man, um, fat. And I saw him from far away and I said, it looks like a king. And from there, you see, it became more and more, that gave place to another thing. And he, in my mind, he was writing poems or his memoirs or something. And that as he wrote, it gave me, and I saw it in my mind, the sheets of paper flying with the wind. And he didn't care. Because once you produce a work of art, a poem, it really doesn't matter if it, if it goes. And the wind took the sheets of paper. And he kept on writing. You paint, and the process of painting is the one that liberates you. It's like an entrance in another dimension, and a, a door to another place. Davidson that I'm painting uh, in a night landscape. I think that sometimes one paints to prove to yourself that you can do it. To make a scene at night, it's hard. It's a challenge every time that I paint. I have doubts all the time. If you don't have doubts, it's very, it would be very, very boring. <laughs> you have to always have doubts that you can do it, and then you do it. I paint because I want to see the dream forth is there, materializing it as if by magic. You create that which you are interested in seeing. When I was a, a child, if I wanted a bicycle or a motorcycle or whatever, I did drawings of it. And sure enough, I would get it. And then I thought, if I do that, those people that lived so long ago, I could not classify them because that was not. Uh, I was thinking of the, the Neanderthal without knowing their name. If they did paintings in the walls, they did it because they had the same feeling I had. If they painted it, they were captured. <laughs> Strange, no? The way children think, no?
She said, I fought all the way. I guess she wanted me to do something else other than becoming an artist. Why? I don't know. Sometimes parents get the wrong idea of things. But I gave up, she said. And I'm glad that I gave up on it. I learned a lot from her. My father also was a man that was a very, very intelligent man. And I did learn a lot from him. He never thought I, uh, he had taught me anything. He taught me quite a bit. And I am very, very grateful to, to both of them. They say that children choose their parents before they come to this earth. I think I did it. I had a good choice. <laughs>